in a world surrounded by franchises, reboots, and shared universes. An elite team of podcasters will risk body and soul to investigate the depths of intellectual properties, one multiverse, subgenre, and trend at a time. Who are we? We're the IP Squad. Welcome back to the IP Squad and our ongoing investigation into films based on pulp and comic strip heroes. I'm John Campbell. With me, as always, for this investigation, our favorite buddy cop duo, the Jones Boys. It's our straight yeah. arrow by the book, Brendan Jones. Hello. Brendan Spex Jones and me, Serpico Jones. <laughs> Serpico Robin Joe. Jones, who legally changed his first name to Serpico for this podcast. Yes, Serpico I would say Joe. the only Serpico benefit, short. and I'm sure my brother will agree, the only benefit of having such a lame last name, as in one of the most basic last names of mm. all time, mm. is you can put anything in front of it, it'll sound cool. Yeah. And I mean, Indiana Jones has proved that. So yeah. I always said if I ever have children, which will never happen, but I, I kept thinking, like, I would give them names like Protocol. <laughs> Like it's Paul Jones. It does kind of give you no, the. Yeah. You know what I was fighting to name uh, my kids before they were born <laughs> was uh, I wanted to name them Bond Bullet Joe. There you yes. go. I and, thought about uh, of having a kid named uh, Kent Wayne Jones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my 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 <laughs> black Irish wife like found Celtic spellings of Connery and McQueen. She goes, "How about oh. this?" Oh. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and she said, no. Devlin's awesome. Well, Except and Devlin, is, a great name. Devlin great name. is, you know, more unusual while still being a, a, a normal name. But, you know, put that in front I, of Jones. Is, That's pretty good. Thinking, at some point, one of uh, my nephew's friends will stumble on the history of porn and decide that his middle name is uh, Miss. <laughs> Devlin, Miss <laughs> <laughs> wow well that's how you start off a podcast about flash gordon yeah. i think there's no yeah. other way to, we're to here do it to talk about our last name or our family no we're here to do our new spinoff podcast keeping up with the sam jones <laughs> yeah, <keep it> <laughs> relative because it is such a rare name i didn't grab uh, it from my uh my shelf brandon you've seen it i have a Blu-ray copy of this movie signed by Mr. Jones because I met him at a convention, of course, because yeah, he's wow. probably he's probably actually at a convention right now as we speak. Um, yes, yeah, yes. no, I mean this well, guy, yeah. About him is is it's, it's actually quite good and very, very touching, good. and the fact that he came to terms with and embraces the fandom very very nicely. I, and I uh, it's something we're not talking about for this because we're not doing uh, TV movies uh, for this season. We're not uh, talk about the spirit. spirit. The spirit, but the 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 thing I will say about that is, and I told you the story. But when I was at that convention, I was standing in line to get my Flash Gordon Blu-ray signed, and the guy in front of me was talking Sam Jones' ear off about that Spirit TV movie to the point oh. where Sam Jones went, "Hey, that's great, buddy, but this guy behind you's been in line for a while, so I really got <laughs> this guy. When you were the Spirit, here's the thing about now. It's very interesting about the Will Eisner comic. It, you know, you're just going like, oh god. And he was, you I can tell he's. It's, it, the, the racial insensitivity uh -huh. really, really well. He handled it, you know, I'm sure he gets it a lot, so he handled it like he's just like, that's great, man. I love your enthusiasm, but, like, there are more people. Yeah. <laughs> this is, like, yeah, my yeah, business yeah. at the same time. Uh, so. Brent, I, did I tell you about uh, talking William Shallard's ear off at the Stars of the Twilight Zone autograph <laughs> convention uh, at the, the Billy Garland did, but, Holiday Inn? Yeah, that was when you were you still had, and I still thought that was a great idea, but they're all dead now. You were going to do all a dead. documentary about the great character actors of that period. Yeah, yeah, I. Uh, but William Shallard at one point just, you know, there are other people who need to 
get their photos signed. <laughs> and I had been warned by um, Wyndham's uh, friend Robin's and manager, manager Ronnie William Lee, Wyndham. Uh, that you you go to these things and you're seeing people who are paying their bills by selling these photos. And yeah. he, he says, it's incredibly depressing. I, I know. <laughs> That sounds great. I Ronnie. will say, and Thanks. and uh, I've talked about this before. That's kind of why I don't go to them anymore because I have kind of realized that, uh, and I've heard celebrities even talk about this. Is it's frustrating for them at the same time too because it is like, what do you want out of this interaction? And even I've kind of had that because you know, Brendan, I I mostly right. just get stuff signed now. I'll I'll yeah. you, uh, like companies will just let, and I'm like, that's about it. For as opposed to the awkward thirty seconds I have with somebody. I'll just yeah, take the yeah. signed Blu-ray or poster or whatever, because um, uh, odds are it is kind of Comic-Con awkward and sad. A, a few years ago, one of the saddest things I saw, even though she seemed to be having a good time, was walking by uh, Lana Wood. Oh. And the thing with, about oh. walking by Lana Wood was she wasn't in the celebrity area. That's she the just thing. Had a table. You told so me about like this. A, I didn't even know she was there. Comic person and someone selling lightsabers, and then Lana Wood in a sequin gown in her eighties <sighs> or whatever, and signing photographs yeah. of her from, uh, you know, Diamonds Diamond Forever. Film. Yeah, and you're like, wow. I, I, mm. you told me this after that convention. I said I didn't even know she was there. I would have probably gone up and met because it's a Bond girl. I'm, you know, a yeah, huge yeah. Bond guy. But Plenty uh yeah. Plenty of tool. Yeah, but yeah. of course you are. Um, one of my favorite just co- yeah. She goes, I'm plenty, but of course you are. One of my favorite just have yeah. anyway. Yeah, on to this yeah, movie though. But yeah. yes, Sam well, Sam J Jones uh, and also uh, has a, a huge thank you he owes to Seth MacFarlane for really uh, oh, boosting yes. his thing with the, with the whole bit and Ted and his cameos and that and and continuing to. Yeah. Keep this Seth movie MacFarlane, alive. Uh, you know, used his success uh, in a similar way that Kevin Smith did, which is we're just huge nerds, and now that we have some power, right. uh, it's like I'm going to shout my love of this yeah. movie from the mountaintops. This was already a cult film. It just yes. that, of course, um, the the star is still alive, and this guy's like going, "I'm going to put Sam Jones in and- my." And he's yeah. actually did Teddy and talk about being okay with the uh, legacy. Because, <laughs> he puts on the yeah, costume in the movie. He puts on the wig. The costume. It's it's he's yeah. really funny in it actually. He is. Yeah, yeah. I, he's I think he does a fine job in Flash Gordon. I agree. And I actually think that whoever. I mean, we did. I did through IMDb find out who voiced. The, but it it was unknown for a voice. long stretch of time. It was it was uh, like a mystery. People had to kind of. Yeah. discover it for years eventually who did do the voice british character actor doing a very good american voice and i will say it is one of the best dubbing Dude, jobs right I, there with bert frobe i uh, was um, uh gert frobe yeah, frobe, sorry. yeah uh good yeah respect mr goldfinger um but uh, <laughs> and, and uh do, because again, the visual acting is there yes. like in other yeah. words it's not like they're bad actors either one. They just said in the case of Bond, it's like we we need him to be understandable and we're just going to use this other guy's voice. Right. Uh, um, and a, I think Sam Jones is totally there. Like it's not yeah. – he's not wooden. He is acting as right. one off in Flash yeah. Gordon. And it's just for – spite and legal problems that they brought in well, s- somebody else and to they, actually put the voice on and and also just told him to sound like sam jones which is interesting because there are a, yeah. i don't know exactly where they are but they have to there, there are a couple, couple of his of actual lines in the movie but i agree Brandon. i really watched it this time in the beautiful 4k restoration it's pretty seamless. It's it's amazing. Jump is pretty seamless. I was and watching. There's yeah. plenty of ADR with the other actors yeah. as well, to where you're sitting there going like, "Oh, it doesn't really stand out." Mm-mm. It's not at any point no. where you're like going, "Wow, did someone just come <laughs> in talking into a tin can and going, well, I'm da da da." And as we I'm talked about, totally the different area. The no. guy is basically yeah. doing an impression of what Sam Jones sounds like, so the voice fits the look anyway. <laughs> and yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. <laughs> As we talk, um, as we'll talk about one of my favorite uh, I'm gonna stories. Be, of this. If you, yeah. if you, you know, uh, uh, here's a curious oh, piece oh, of trivia, though. Oh, oh, here we go. When okay. Melody Anderson says "Go Flash, Go," mm-hmm. that's actually the voice of uh, Sir John Gilgood. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> no, Robin. Sorry, that's been dispelled many yeah. years ago. La- the well, urban it's legend. Eddie, he was a big it was actually fan. Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah. <laughs> go, Flash, go! Go, Flash, go! Go, Flash, go! Uh, but yes, Brandon, I think... Starts a little smaller and then he gets bigger. Right? Uh, he gets bigger. Like a cheerleader. Yeah, the, this yeah, the, yeah, the, we're 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 the, this is we're already off the rails. So let's get back on the rails, Brandon. With how we usually hey, start history. these with you as our uh, as a sort of historian. Let's talk about the history okay. of Flash Gordon, the comic strip character. I love Flash Gordon, the character. I love the original comic strip. Um, yeah. This is one of those examples where someone saw something popular, said copy that, and someone actually did it better. So right. Buck Rogers is really America's first space hero of the right. comic strips. Yeah. And uh, Buck Rogers was uh, the 20s, 29. Yeah, okay. And it's... If you look at the comic strip or read the original pulp novel it's based on, both of which are written by the same guy, that's what the real... You're like, wow, I can't believe that he took his self-serious apocalyptic story, pulp story, and turns it into a, a comic strip for kids. Buck Rogers is a lot of fun, has a great concept. The art's not great. And it's really, you know, kid adventure stuff. Then it's a huge explosion, and basically you have another publisher going, we got to have our own Buck Rogers. Pardon me, I burped. And uh, so King Features basically looks at young Alex Raymond, who's already an amazing comic strip artist. He was doing Secret Agent X9. Uh, And they go, hey, you got anything? He's like, I can come up with something. And he comes up with Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon, right off the bat, is the better comic strip. It's totally different concept. Instead of a take on Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, well, he doesn't go into the future. It's right. actually contemporary. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes, yes, that's what you're saying. Uh, no, it's three Earthmen, uh, Earth people, uh, going to a, a planet that's attacking Earth, and only they are able to stop. Right. You know, the earth from exploding. This movie, for as goofy as it is, is actually hewing pretty closely to, yeah. like, especially yeah. the first year or so of the comic strip. But, um, so I love it. It, it. And Alex Raymond is just an amazing illustrator. He's one of, one of the greats of all time. Yes. Uh, and I have, they did really nice hardcovers of the entire Alex Raymond run. Uh, I also have the entire Alex Raymond run of Rip Kirby, which never interested me much until I actually sat down and read it. And I was like going, my God, his art got even better. He died young. Sorry about that, Alex Raymond. Uh, And Dave Sim did an entire graphic novel about the death of Alex Raymond. Anyway. Yeah. In a a car accident. But anyway, so uh, Flash Gordon, the concept. I love the fact that his name is just Flash. And I love the fact that the whole idea is that the Earth is saved by a polo player. <laughs> right. <laughs> because yeah. in the comic strip, started in 34, uh, yeah. Flash Gordon is not a quarterback of the New York Jets. Quarterback New York player. Jets. That's that's what I put. I couldn't think Flash Gordon, quarterback New York Jets. Nope. Nope. Sorry, <laughs> that's his full name. Is, uh, no, he's a polo player, yeah. but all-around athletic guy. And Dale Arden is just girl. Uh, yeah. at least in the movie they're like going she's a uh, what they say she's travel a agent travel agent flying. yeah yeah who hates flying oh. yeah. and Dr. Hans Zarkov who is I mean even in the comic strip he's uh, Topolesque maybe not quite all there he does in fact force them onto the rocket with a gun I love that they make him to save the earth I do like that they make him still kind of unstable in the movie right like I do enjoy that it's just that in in, and they Topol is here for it do everything well here's my hot take on the movie which I said I promised one oh yeah the thing is with me I am the guy who loves the source material and when they screw with it uh, I get upset you're that guy I'm that guy. I think anyone who's heard any podcast years, you've done on this network knows you're that guy. Yeah. Even in 1980, when I was 11 years old, and this was in the theater, and we yeah. went with our father, uh, and I remember him falling asleep in Flash Gordon, but that was probably because of the drinking. I was, yeah. This is because yeah, um, it's I I boring. It is not. He was um, to snore. It is not a boring uh, movie but, by any stretch of the imagination. But at least, uh, unlike his parents, he didn't talk to the screen while passed out. Yeah, oh. that is very important. Uh. Um, 
Well, Dude, anyway, this one is I getting remember, personal. Uh, even at yeah. 11, I had a lot of fun with the movie, but I, I was sitting there going, this is not the take. Right. I've come, I, I'm at peace with it now. Here's the thing. This is similar okay. to what I was saying about with like fives. Not in the same way because there's no source material for fives. Right. There are things where, yes, logic brain and storyteller brain, I, uh, I, I kind of rankle at stuff. If it's well done, I just have to let it go. Here's the thing. Yeah, yeah. This is not my ideal Flash Gordon, but this is a valid take. Well, and when I watch it and I just surrender to it, like I did last night, I think, it's awesome. Because I think I, it was really good. It's a really good movie. Yeah. I I think there's a way, and perhaps the new one that could they keep talking about, perhaps someone will do a straight ahead Flash Gordon. Um, and I'm all about it. But this thing, I just sit there going like late seventies attempt at doing this kind of material. That's about as good as it was ever going to be. Cause I and think it's even the campy thing works because everyone's on the same page. That's right. okay. That's Everyone. where I was going to go because yeah. after we did the doc Savage man of bronze, it really made it. This is a, looking at both of these movies, doc Savage and this, it is very interesting to see <laughs> what, is camp because camp is not spoof and i think that's very oh, yeah. key uh, they can sometimes go hand in hand but and and this being lorenzo semple jr makes a lot of sense right coming from batman and i think yeah, 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 similar yeah. to what works about this is it's not like you're laughing out loud it's just larger than life and everybody is knows it's ridiculous but isn't acting like it's ridiculous and i think that's no, very you've key got a, a number of shakespeare trained guys mm -hmm. in it and on top of that von Sydow, who came from the theater certainly gets what the what the thing is god he's so good in this he's so good this in this movie could not exist he's just great yeah no he, and then he is on, the center of this on top thing. of that you know, Melody Anderson wasn't a bad actress. She's a good actress. She gets what's going on. Mm -hmm. it, it, everybody. I mean, Dalton comes swaggering into this it. thing, and he's the biggest badass casting, you've ever seen. Casting, obviously, score, wow. obviously, yeah. art direction, costume design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, really, everyone's looks in this movie kills, except for flashes. I've got major problems with, <laughs> well, with sure. tank tops. But other than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But every costume, I mean, I'm sitting there going, that's not exactly Alex Raymond. But it, but, but it's it, it echoes it's it in the spirit. Yeah, the the rockets are are 70s versions of the right. cheesy 30s idea of needle art, nose art, rockets and stuff. The and art deco, yes, and yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. loving all of it, and uh, and. I think Lorenzo Simple Jr., obviously Batman TV show, like you said, mm -hmm. John, it is an example of someone who is not spoofing. It comes from genuine affection. He's not. He's not. He's not. Like, he's not poking at it. He's kids, not coming no, at it with like at. with like a. It, that's the thing about the Doc Savage movie, or like a lot of the other stuff that we've seen across the years, have been like, "Isn't this fucking dumb?" No, this is totally yeah. sincere, but also yeah. wild. Like, it's it's wild, I've not seen, silly. You know I've what seen, I mean? like, the documentary about the making of it and all mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And, and the thing is, is that it's an unlikely director for the material, but somehow he takes it seriously <laughs> and does a great the job. Interview, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the interview editing is great in this, too. It's like you're picking yeah. the exact right moments. It flows. It's, it's It pops. That's it, exactly. We, we've got an yeah. A-level a team. I love the bit. Uh, there's a couple of bits that that uh, I I kept thinking, oh God, I forgot all about this. The bit where the um, the the pilots of the plane are not just zapped by Ming, but Ming comes in and sort of grabs he's, them or something. It, he's it's, in the face of the meteor that's coming yeah. at them. Yeah. Right, right, right. Is, like wow, which is great. And then. Um, the other thing was uh, uh, Zardov's um, Zarkov. Uh, Zarkov's. I'm sorry, I keep thinking of Zardoz. Um, Zarkov's. Also, uh, weird bizarre. 70s sci fi movie. Like, well, God. Charlotte <laughs> Rampling, am I right, fellas? <laughs> Charlotte Rampling. Oof. Charlotte Rampling. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think you get a lot of pushback on that. Um, Oof. There's no pushback. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is, is the mind wipe scene with uh, Zarkov. 
which is incredibly well done. Like the the montage of his memories. Yeah. Um, as, as his heartbeat is slipping yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. back to his birth, you're like, wow. It was it was incredible. And, and they, a lot of stuff. thought was put into that, including like scenes that that he had to play out as memories. Yes. Yeah, that was. And, and he's great in those. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the, the scenes are very well done. And I, I just kept thinking they, the they way, put a I lot into this to make it work. Up. Topol is he Topol, again? Hey. He knows what he's doing oh, here. He knows he's, exactly he's, what he's doing. There, him and Cedow both being stage actors. Yeah, and actually, a lot of the Shakespearean guys too. They do understand. It's like I'm going to step it up from reality. The fact that yeah. Zarkov and a lot of things is using his hands so much, which again, that's very Topol. I mean. Yeah, fiddler on the roof and so forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, I'm doing the, 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 and he's like doing the hands. I'm like, going, yeah. yeah, that's because you are just you're elevating it to a comic strip they, level. Well, he said, yeah, right. but there's, he but there's sincerity. Into the, in, yeah, into Sorry. some specifics. I gotta say, uh, they got me right off the bat. Possibly the greatest title sequence oh. opening of a movie ever. Oh, for sure, sure. It, it's up. It's up there with excited. Superman. I would say. Superman the movie. Yes, yes, yes. It's very similar. Both, like, great. Clytus, I'm bold. Clyde. Is well, there a better uh, opening <laughs> line in? Is yeah. there a better Obscure line in, in some... K system? Yeah. The residents refer to it as the planet Earth. Peter yeah, the Wendell, way he hits Earth. Clytus, yeah. <laughs> come on. There are t- the, there are two and inc- the theme song, and then the Alex Raymond art. Yeah. I'm just like going. They're well, actually. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up Superman the movie because it does a similar thing as that, right? Where it's like yes. it instantly is like you are entering a comic book, like the, yeah, not, and not yeah. but not in a not in a not in a once again not in a talking down way like Doc Savage, where it's just like you have now stepped into the pages of a comic book, and so yes. it it, it yeah. creates yeah, this wave um, over it's you. Unchained. It it's just like going, dude. I mean, we are we are going to the, this world. It, but I mean, it yeah. is kind of similar to the opening title sequence. Of the Batman show, Very much so. you know, I mean, but I'm saying like, you know, not not the literal comic, but it is the cartoon imagery of the, and it is sort of like, yes, now it right. is sort of giving you permission it's to engage with it. Adults, yes, that's exactly it. Giving permission, it's giving the I'm too sh- too cool for this or too smart or yeah. too grown up yeah. mature for this. It's giving them allowance to say. No, no, it's all right. Yeah, and it's a, it is. It's brightly colored, and you're in. Yeah. It's like we you don't read this when you were eight, and yeah. you're still gonna love it. That's it exactly. You're like, you're and right. now the three of and us it, don't it, need that because we're also, you know. um, <laughs> we don't need that. Yeah, <laughs> Raimi's Spider-Man Two opening with credits, the Alex Ross, with the Alex Ross, uh, amazing um, recap of the previous amazing. movie, but it's a comic form. And, and guess uh, what? It works for me. Yeah, yeah, Strangely, that was really incredible. I found that okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. That's one of it's my really favorite good. opening title sequences. I love that, and such oh, a like man. only well, a fucking I mean, comic Spider-Man nerd too. like. Well, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Two right. is it's the greatest comic book movies ever made. Yeah, yeah easily yeah. in the top Spider-Man, five. Yeah. Spider-Man Two is like they allowed, like they they pulled off their whatever the breaks they had on Sam yeah. Raimi, and he just got to make. The and then they immediately put those was breaks. It Spider-Man or back. Spider-Man Two that we were in when the theater. Uh, the, when there was a fire Spider-Man, in the, the first one. It was the uh, first one. And we walked out, and they were right well, the fire. And, and all fire. Nobody does anything about it. Yeah, they just want to see the last five minutes of the movie. Yeah, that <laughs> so was as a, long as it doesn't spread. They're going to stay in the auditorium. Yeah, and then and, with the and, credits and, uh, and Brian that's when everybody outside, left. And and they were like, uh, "Oh, you guys suck around to the end of the credits too." <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. I love the fact that that a uh, couple of comedy superstars. And us, yeah. uh, willing to possibly burn to death to see the last couple of minutes of Spider. Yeah, Brian, well, Brian Pissane and um, uh, Patton. Was, was Patton. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's a, it's, it's, I remember I remember Patton coming out of um, uh, Hulk had opened at the Grove, oh. the Ang Lee Hulk. Yeah, and he came out with uh, uh, this guy Dave Anthony, and and, uh, and I said, "What'd you think?" And he. Pat goes, well, actually, you know, the problem with it is sort of that it adheres in some ways to the original Kirby book, but it works in a little Herb Trimp as well. And <laughs> Yep, that's that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, anyway, no, the thing, but the, the thing I was, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the, the director, though, Brandon, because, yeah, My Mike God. Hodges, who I love 
He's made a couple of my very favorite movies, including this one, yeah. by the way, because I do. Uh, once again, I I I was well, you like, unabashed. You like some of his other work, do you? I like some. Some of his other work. His... That girl was nine years old. <laughs> Nine years, nine years old. She was only nine years old. Nine years old. Um, but uh, yeah, you, I love I love a trembly cane. <laughs> she was only nine years old. No, um, but um, uh, no, Hodges comes <laughs> and and, and uh, trip. And comes doing I, uh, Michael Caine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't don't make me get into the Alfred lines because I'll go all day. But um, right, right, yeah. the uh, 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 the thing about Hodges, uh, I highly recommend. Because they have interviews with pretty much everybody on the Arrow video. The Mike Hodges yeah. interview is so long and rambling. And he's talking yeah. about, you know, when I was growing up. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I was sort of a naive Brit. And you just get like, I, I mean, literally you're going like, are yeah. you going to talk about Flash Gordon anytime soon? <laughs> like, they just no. like, but, but when he you does go. He might approach the material at some point? No. He, did, he, no. Did, no. he does well, go. Okay, he fine. goes. Because they Brendan, came. were you with me when we saw the uh, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World with the remaining cast and no, uh, Mickey was Rooney not. was there? No. Oh, oh God. God. I Mickey love older Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Talks I love about older everything Mickey Rooney. but the uh, movie. He only mentions it briefly. And then uh, he talks about it. Basically, <laughs> it's the impression that Dana Carvey does. It, it, yeah. <laughs> where he was Mary Day of a Gardener, the most beautiful woman yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. The world, um, yeah, uh, but uh, no, so yeah, Mike Hodges though he even goes, he goes, even I thought I was kind of a strange choice because I was really at that time focused on grounded realism in film, and you are thinking yeah. like, yeah, yeah, the guy who made Get Carter is not the first yeah, person yeah. I think of as making Flash Gordon. Not the only at all. thing, the only thing he'd done that in any way leaned this way was the Terminal Man he had done in '74. Oh, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. a science fiction movie, but not this, you know. Not really. Yeah, yeah not not in this. So, uh, so, but he goes, and but he basically was just like, "Hey, Dino called, and I said, uh, eh, why not?'" Like, <laughs> this guy was just like, "I need he something to do." I mean, again, he he did not look down on the material. Mm -mm. There are things in there where I'm going, no. "Look at that! Look at the way he's framing this." Now, yeah. you, watch, you, you watch this; it's like watching Superman the movie, where somebody clearly indulged their inner kid. Yeah. And their inner kid's love of that stuff. Yeah. And, and never. And that's. Uh, I, was really, I mean, literally, the only sequence that doesn't really work for me is the football sequence. Is the football sequence. Like yeah, everything so, else. I don't know. Right. I, I, I kind of love the football yeah, sequence, though. Where, where the. the We know what we're doing, a wink of camp doesn't work and is cringe, and that is cringe. That <laughs> said, I, again, I, I'll forgive it. I'll forgive it because the, the parts yeah, well, dumb. like I said, the, the that's where the score does a lot of work. The score yes, does a does. lot of work because help get help get and you. And actually, that. Uh, I mean, credit all around. Dino was not. I mean, Dino like we've talked uh, about Dino on the show before, of course. Dino De Laurentiis' as producer is right up there with the Salkinds. It's actually a yeah. good correlation where yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. not artists they're pretty much con men but at the same time mm. through some canniness they each made some masterpieces and i'll include the three and four musketeers and mm -hmm. superman yeah. for the mm -hmm. south kinds mm -hmm. and yeah. over on dino dino did some good movies i think dino, dino i think dino was a, crap. a yeah i think crap. a lot of crap i do think overall dino better producer uh, yes, yes. Be, or at least had a better eye for material. He did do a lot of crap, but I think the high uh, he has more high highs than than the song yes. certainly. And this yeah, is even this his, is, his uh, uh, original Italian work. He he's one of the producers on Fellini films. He he's a very well. Should we talk uh, about the fact? Any guy should we talk? Princess Aura calls uh um uh what's his name Roy um. Deep Roy. Oh yeah, Deep Roy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's, who's her, her little, little person assistant? She calls him Fellini. She well, come Fellini. Should we yeah. talk now about <laughs> yeah, the fact that yeah. Fellini was apparently at some point maybe going to direct this movie, or at least yeah. considered, or was mildly interested? Wow. He had the rights. Yeah, Fellini. And yeah, that's it's the reason why uh, Lucas wasn't able to do it. Yeah, Lucas he just wanted to do Flash Gordon and ended up doing Star Wars instead. That's the famous story. Yeah. And that's one of those talk about a thing where it's like 
that really worked out because I don't know that I mean Lucas's Flash Gordon I'm sure would have been good but we got Star Wars you know it's sort of a thing where it's like right comic strip was was worldwide famous but but interestingly um Italians loved Flash Gordon well, and so it does not surprising that Fellini you know got those rights yeah I think Flash yeah. Gordon and Alex Raymond that's how we got a Mobius it's, literally is that Mobius is like yeah, 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 yeah. well Flash Gordon. we know this Europe has always had a much better view of of comic <laughs> books changed. as an art form oh yeah I mean exactly. oh, they, yeah. They've, 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 they've always they've, they've always they've always yeah they've always valued it as an art form uh, more yeah, so I, where where America's come a long way but way before us they were embracing comic book art as a, a valid piece Which, a valid again, medium you know? Scorsese's argument against comic book movies drives me bats yep because all i keep thinking is where where's the difference between this and westerns yep this yeah. exactly you love yep. you love westerns you love other genre films yep and somehow he you can't make horror horror films. Uh, he likes trash genre it's stuff. so yeah. he refuses to go into we've, comics we've if, or if, comic strips. if one of our yeah. one of our ongoing like big theses brendan across all the podcasts we've done <laughs> is theses theses um that uh that, that across all the oh. the podcasts we've done is some people just can't get past capes and tights. It's just, there's some sort of mental block. We see it with a lot of film critics, with Scorsese, with certain people. Yeah. Uh, Coppola, too. I love that Coppola goes, I'm going to go even further than Scorsese. It's all trash, you know? Um, it's all trash. And yeah. you just go like, but it's just like, uh, there's some kind of block in these people's heads but your that they can't see it. love this stuff. Isn't that what crazy? Is your problem? I know, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's so insane. There's just some sort of thing about like, nope, the man put on a cape and flew in the air i'm sorry that's too far that yeah. can't be yeah, i just yeah, i don't get it way too far. far i just don't get it anyway um back to this though uh, yes uh, uh, i don't know how serious fellini ever was really about like there's no he wasn't like in pre-production i think i think it was like no, oh no, let me get the rights to that maybe i might do something do something yeah so know. anyway uh uh Dilo De La, though the Fellini loses the rights or whatever, Dilo De Laurentiis buys them from him because the funny thing is after Star Wars, then suddenly Dino De Laurentiis is like, Flash Gordon, yes, like this is perfect. <laughs> we should do this. Uh, um, uh, it is how you say there is a gold in them that are <laughs> I seem no, to totally remember reading uh, right. Star Wars you as a kid. I mean. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, uh, so uh, he gets this, and they hire. And this is one of the big reasons to get the 4K. Is there's an entire documentary, a little half-hour documentary about Nick Rogue's development of Yeah. Oh, Flash wow. Gordon, and because that's who they hire. Uh, Dino De Laurentiis hires Nicholas wow. Rogue to direct. Flash Gordon, and it got pretty far. It's not the Fellini thing where it's like they they get into they had a fully written script. They show concept art and storyboards in the documentary. Wow, it's it's great. It's called Lost in Space. Nick Rogue's Flash Gordon. Um, Man, I d here's I, the thing. Is, I did not know that. It um, is. I don't know. It is. I'm gonna pause it. Yeah. And say right now, yeah. as much of a mind blower as it is, Mike Hodges directing this. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't know if Nick Rogue would have had the lightness of time. Uh, that no, was no. that there that, that you've just without having seen the document, you just nailed why it didn't work. Is that I, seemed I, to be the main he, I, point? I think Nick Rogue is great. Yep, huge fan. Amazing. Look at my steel book of the man who fell to earth over here. Yep. Sure. Uh, Something but they something they said. Uh, one of the things that they said because obviously they don't talk to Nicholas Rogue in it, but they do talk to the writer. They talk to yeah. the, one of the concept artists, and they talk to I can't I think uh, either like a production designer or something. And one of them says, I think he goes, he really liked space. He didn't seem to understand science fiction, at least not in this capacity, yeah. like as pulp. What what I could assume he would have done is that. He again, it's what we talk about where even talented people go wrong with genre stuff or adapting IP. Yeah. Is yeah. Nicholas Rogue would have, I've cracked it, uh, I can improve it, I'm better That's than the material. What exactly and I'm sure like, yeah. it would have been, you know, pseudo 
intellectual yep. um and i mean the man's not an action sequence guy either he's a brilliant yeah. visualist but oh, yeah. it's not about that kind of kinetic stuff that seemed so to I be have a feeling it would yeah. have been heady and yep. possibly trippy yep. and it would have been wrong um i will I... say getting a <laughs> getting a hackmeister to some degree like dino de Laurentiis is at least he's like no no make the thing <laughs> but I'm going to encourage whoever ends up directing it for me or whoever ends up doing it, try to sell it to the adults and the kids walk that line because one of the things I'm sure that John, you might have seen in the documentary or just it's out there is it was intended to be slightly more adult mm -hmm. than what we got. Mm. And there are traces Absolutely. of that left. If you read the novelization, which I have, of course, you oh. have. The novelization is based on early drafts. Yeah, it's as pretty a, kinky. That's a lot. I, mean, of... I think he was well, sure. Like Barbarella, only less. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but Ornella stuff in the novelization. Yeah. Well, the whole thing about like uh, Ming's ring, like causing Dale to oh. kind of have an orgasm, and the whole yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and when Aura's making out with him, and there's the telepathic link with Dale, and she's yeah. like, and he's like, man, this girl's really turning me on. Uh, right, right, right. And all that stuff is left over because he was like, no, no, it'll be the thrills, the kids will enjoy. There's sword play and there's laser guns, but also occasionally tits. Yeah, uh, and, well, yeah. So God, now you know but, back on it, I, but there's I know we, we don't talk about the uh, serials here, but you know the ring you can mention thing them, with though. Dale. Yeah. That's that's from one of the serials, Brendan. And that's also from the comic strip to some degree. Yeah. yeah Essentially yeah. in the comic strip, and I will say casting Melody Anderson was a real boon. Casting everyone's a boon. Because yeah, actually, not only did no she notes get, on casting. No notes, really. Uh, she gets oh, yeah. the whole thing of, of damsel in distress, but occasionally I can kick ass. Yeah. And she also gets the humor of it. Yeah. She's great. The, I'm a modern gal, but occasionally I need help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she also has this face, which is very throwbacky, which is great. Yeah. She has a 30s, 40s right. prettiness. And very like much perfect so. Perfect tale. And then, obviously, great casting of Ornella Muti because Princess Aura, being Ming's daughter, should be exotic and overly yeah. yep. sexualized. Yep. And you're all going, perfect. And then you have a movie where they have a cat fight and a pillow fight, and you're like going, "Hello, well done, well done." Well, so no, I mean it is it is a perfect summary of what they were doing. But there are little winks and nods throughout the whole movie where they're going, "Guys, you get it," or not just guys, but, but adults, you get. What's well, going and I think on, that's. Right? Well, Laurentis uh -huh. was also the producer on Barbarella, right? Yeah, and uh, and Danger he, Diabolique, yeah. which we did. Uh, which also yeah. had a oh, yeah. sexiness to it without being oh, yes. overt, right? Without being uh, explicit, I should say. Uh, it's overt, yeah. but it's not explicit. Uh, but I think, yes, uh, Rogue's version, though, yes, very heady. Uh, one of the big things that the writer talked about, Dan Lorenz is always going, uh, more fun? Could there be more fun in it? Uh, yes. Maybe a joke? He's uh, <laughs> like, oh, this is very interesting, but... Um Where's the fun? Yeah, and it was like, but I mean, like, and in his, yes, it was all about how Ming was going to erase all of the people of planet Earth, and then, yes, he and Dale would repopulate the planet. It was like a whole thing yeah. where he was going to be, he was going to create a new well, race that, of that's perfect. Still which is, in the movie. Which is but it's, let's say it was, it once again, much movie. more, like, psychologically sexual, and, you know, I mean, like, well, psychosexual, and yeah. It's, it, yeah. It's something I never... I, I never picked up on until I was reading in uh, some of the IMDb notes. I mean, it's just that, again, I saw this when I was 10, yeah. and so a lot of it, I wasn't obviously connecting these dots, yeah. but apparently there was, at least Wingard is very proud of, of talking about, there was going to be a sequel and Clytus was going to come back. Yes, yep. But the idea is that the hand that picks up the ring at the end is actually supposed to be Clytus. Yep. And it turns out that all Clytuses, because of, there are multiples, are clones yeah. of Ming. Yeah. So that was Ming transferring his consciousness. I would have seen that body. movie. I would have seen that right. movie. It sounds awesome. But then you start thinking about, oh, Clytus had the hots for Princess Aura. Wow. Right. So if uh, Clytus is a Ming clone, yeah. 
it, there's incest there, and the whole thing about <laughs> I haven't seen a reaction that strong to the the orgasm since ring your daughter, since your daughter, yeah, and you're like going, oh, and then Aura yeah. also says the thing about oh, my dad likes to take this drug before he has sex. Yeah. Why would you know that Princess Aura? That's creepy. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff is yeah. still in this movie for well, kids. Yeah, and it just blows uh, past your mind. Michael, you don't know what's going on. Michael Allen uh, is the guy who wrote the Rogue version. He still has a story bike credit on this yes. because a lot of the broad strokes of it, and a lot of that comes from Alex Raymond, as you bring up, because they are but yeah. like are still there. But Put he's... some kinky stuff in that, too. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, there yeah. isn't a lot of older comics, actually, you know? I mean, like they're they're you well, know. The whole thing of uh, he was famous for. It. I mean, he drew an incredibly Greek godlike Flash. You know, yes. just cut out of Marvel. Yeah. Flash is a very serious character in the comic strip. There's not a lot of jokes or fun in the comic strip. Yeah. It's straight ahead science fantasy adventure stuff. Right. It's like uh, a Jules uh, Verne kind of yeah. thing, or, or John and, and Carter, Hawk, Lord of Mars, and all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. By the way, it is sad to me that Prince Thun is named in this movie and is killed. And Prince Thun is a long-standing character. He's one of the Lion Men. So the, the oh, they talk the about black guy at the beginning. They call him Prince Thun, and I'm like, yeah. if that's Prince Thun, why isn't he a Lion Man? And two, why <laughs> kill him off? They yeah. do talk about Rogue really. Rogue really loved the Lion Man. He wanted a lot of the Lion Man as a big part of it in his version, awesome. which I just think is interesting, but though. I but I think they were also kind of like, yeah. To, you've got to have the two main rival guys. Voltan and Baron. Uh, Prince Baron of, of the uh, tree men right, well, of Arborea. You, you and, have and, more time in comic strips and serialized yes. movies. to And Prince Vulcan go, of the Hawkmen. Yep. Go go right. to all these different worlds. Yes. Right. And if there had been that, sequels, they would have gone to Phrygia. That's yeah. the ice yeah. place. And all that stuff. Blah, blah, blah. And they would have, they would have had Lion Man in there. Flash meets throughout the comic strip. They all fall in love with him. They all want him. Yeah. He stays yeah. true to Dale. Of course. But what I was saying is, like with Alex Raymond, he was famous for drawing like Greek god Flash, but obviously Dale is gorgeous yeah. and Princess Aura is gorgeous. And in that comic strip, in the 30s, there's plenty of like bare back scenes of, of her being whipped and stuff. Yeah. The torture yeah. stuff is right out of the comic strip, too. It right. was all the peril. And Flash himself was often chained up, like, yeah. shirtless, yeah. and like, I can't get out, I'm struggling. And you had probably adults reading the comic strip going, like, something about this speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this doesn't awaken well, anything. Uh, it uh, is. You know, Brennan, the, like, uh, Professor Marston and the Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. Right. They, they, uh, they were work, work, maybe they, maybe Alex Raymond had some issues he was trying to work out. Sure, <laughs> could Quite be. possibly. Or maybe <laughs> had an editor going... Hey Alex, can you uh, <clears throat> spice it up a little? Huh? Well, much well there's a lot of that a much as we bring uh, up cliff dragons and all the the, the zap zap <laughs> and a little bit more. Of that. I mean, it oh, is oh. it is so in Marston psychology, but that imagery is <laughs> all over <laughs> comics of that. Also, some for daddy. Uh, uh, yeah. Some for daddy. Uh, yeah, his editor <laughs> Don DeMello. Um, yeah, Don DeMello. Yeah, yeah. Don DeMello. I always give us. This one's some in there for daddy. This one's different. This one's. <laughs> This one's got a little something for like daddy. One of the funniest, yeah. funniest of all time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I think I think a lot of this is does seem to be focused, as you're saying. Like they do so, and, and making it. And honestly, as a kid and to this day, my favorite characters are still Baron and Voltan. They're like yeah. like as a kid, you know, Flash is awesome. But but I was like. Prince Baron and is got, way cooler than two Flash. Guys who get it. Get and know it. How to do it. Get absolutely. I, mean, Jesus, I don't know if two God, guys can get it more. In a Robin Hood outfit. Some and Brian the, Blessed as a Viking Hawkman. Born for this. Some, the some of, of the them. dialogue that I mean, actually, some of the dialogue that any of the actors are forced to say is awkward. Uh, yeah. But especially early on, literally the second they show up on Mongo, and you have. I mean, yeah, Zarkov is the smart guy, but literally he says, he goes, well, maybe they'll just want to have a peace accord. And, you go, and they go, no, th these people have us as prisoners, definitely. And he goes, uh, and he goes, I think it's more of a dictatorship. And he's like going, well, that's even better because then all of his people are, are you know, waiting for right. him to be overthrown. Yeah. We can get them to come together. It's awkward that he immediately says, Flash, you will be the man who leads these people <laughs> to revolt. Yeah. And right. Flash is like going, me? I'm a quarterback. I'm quarterback, New but, York Jets. 
but Sam Jones is somehow able to play Flash Gordon's heroism. And I'll yes. say Lorenzo Simple does a good job of not making him... One of my problems with the modern take, which I know was it Jeff Parker. In the yeah, comic? Jeff, yeah, yeah. The, he did Dynamite. Yeah, like the the recent Flash Gordon comics. It's the take of uh, Flash Gordon is a hero, but he's uh, by default because he's just kind of this bumbling himbo. Um, and Dale's the smart one, and Zarkov yeah. is also smart. But but Flash is just like I just do stupid stuff, and it somehow works. And I don't like that take. This one, he is a little goofy, but at the same time, he's completely sincere. The whole thing he's, about yeah. uh, him when he's in the cage in the swamp, yeah. he just met that Hawkman who's one of his fellow prisoners, but he's like, no, 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 stay strong. You're like, we'll get out of this thing. And he does, and the whole saving Prince Baron after it's like, you won, let him drop. He's like, no, I will save yeah. this guy yeah. and pull him up. No, the, and yeah. together, and again, they're all good, but yeah, Timothy Dalton playing that barren moment by going, wow, I've changed my mind and my heart, and Tim it's all due to you, Flash, and I'm going like, he has shown me something greater than the law of Ming, and I'm like going, oh yeah. my god, it is pure <laughs> hero fiction, I love it, yeah. and the whole uh, Vulcan uh, turnaround scene, Vulcan, when he's like going, oh, okay, maybe he's right. Yes, uh, they each play it Perfect. The right the maybe, way yeah, the way they come an old bird. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they're so they're both and once again, two classically trained dudes who yeah. just the second the e, they both don't of, appear embarrassed. No, no one in this appears embarrassed to be no. honest. Like I said, the when the Very way the way and, Dalton and, uh, rolls Richard into this Brian picture. Is, as, uh, Frickin' Baron's friend. I'm sorry that in the like VHS copies and the TV versions, they cut his scenes. Like he he never gets. But He's even right. just the little bits, I'm like, oh man, I love him as a character actor. He should have been in so much more because that yeah. look that he yeah. has and his menacing sort of. Uh, he's perfect. Yeah. Well, don't worry. I'm sure it's more than Baron in the comic strip because Baron is bald. All the. Uh, <sighs> All the males of Mongo who are humanoid are bald. But I love, yeah, but, Ming but, and but, Baron and so forth. But Baron just wow. looks, I mean, Baron coming in as the he swashbuckling, has a mustache. which, you know, which oh, Dalton no, is, no, he, yeah. I mean, one thing, this is Dalton at, I mean, he's a beautiful man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, Jim Jones is a beautiful man who's dyed his hair to be, you know, bottle blonde Flash Gordon. But yeah. you've got Dalton just like, holy hell, Errol Flynn reincarnated. Which is so like interesting. In the Robin Hood outfit. And it's so interesting that he'll basically play Errol Flynn, you know, a few years later yes. in The Rocketeer. In the Rocketeer. Uh, which, uh, a shout out to our patron content. You can hear us talk about The Rocketeer over there uh, soon. I don't think it's out yet, but... Um, yeah, yeah. But that will be one of uh, our uh, we... related cases, IP Squad related cases episodes. Will be the oh, Rocketeer wow. this season. So, but uh, um... yes, yeah. But no, Dalton. I mean, look. I, I like I said, I love Dalton as a kid. Mm -hmm. I immediately latched on to him. I loved him as Bond. I love wow. him in the Rocketeer. Uh, I just, yeah. I love the dude. And he's like but I said, like, the way he swaggers into this movie, he just swaggers. rules. He just he, the second he comes he on screen, like rules. this guy, this guy's awesome. And, and he's not well, and you, you need he's somebody strong. that strong to balance uh, Brian Blessed who will literally blow you off the screen. Yes. And uh it I, I like and and here's well, the thing Brian Blessed can do three notes but yes. the three great notes. And, and and no one will do as good. Right. And no one will do them as well. So is there a difference between Brian Blessed and this? Brian Blessed in Man of La Mancha and Brian <laughs> Blessed in Black Adder. No, no. Or really Brian no. Blessed playing no. uh, Friar yeah. Tar or no, playing Little John in uh, Prince of Thieves as well. I mean, like, th th there's a blessed no part. There's a blessed part <laughs> for sure. And, yeah, and more power to him because it's yeah. embodied in his physicality. It's everything. Yeah. It's like it. It is exactly the same as a Matt Berry. Where yeah. Well, I was yeah, thinking yeah, 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 yeah. they've a note and a character that these men play, and it's not the same, but I'm just saying that they both you want it. It's like you can't do anything else. Yeah. But you, our, our appetite for that will I never mean, go away. Matt, you want, it, you want away. the line readings because they're so awesome. Yes. Yes. And it just 
voice Brian and Blessed, when he roars is one of the great things. <laughs> the the <laughs> wait, wait, brave Hawkman die. <laughs> yeah, his 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 delivery of first wave dive. Like he turns dive into a four syllable word. I don't know how he's done. Yeah, dive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Flash, Vulcan, dive. That means like, yeah, are you yeah, eating? Yeah, air? Because yeah I love but it. it. It did make me think. You <laughs> have to. Right. You have to cast Matt Berry as Vulcan. Also, right? in the documentary, they do point out, and it's in the movie, is that when he's talking about, oh, I'm going to turn you over to blah blah blah, and he walks behind Dale and gooses her. Yeah, not in the script. Nope. Yeah, and they have so a very Matt real Jackson reaction. Vulcan. <laughs> and and yeah, Vul yeah. Vulcan just goes, ah. the, and like, all right. But it's in character. Yes. Is it a uh, sexual assault? Yes. It's very important. I mean, yeah, I don't, you know, it's uh, I, not Melody. I haven't heard Melody Anderson say that was like, yeah, it's not good. You wouldn't do it today. Uh, but no, I don't think wouldn't. anybody's like harboring any trauma As from it. Actors, you're like, oh, that's something that Vulcan would do. Um, my favorite Voltan yeah. moment, though, is... Uh, in the scene, uh, in the football scene, when he's just casually bashing dudes over the head and then doing oh, like, oh, right. Right. <laughs> I don't even, yeah, how did that happen? It does a lot to help that move along. Yeah. Because yes. you're like, what a he, scamp. Yes, the way he plays it oh. is so sweet. <laughs> I yes. feel really bad for Wingard in that scene simply because a Clytus is a threat and he's a he's a again great costuming great great design. costuming uh, yeah. across um, the board but yeah. Is, yeah I mean he's a whole character and no wonder yep. he's proud of it still to this day and he's he never got his sequel and he's like he's like well yeah Clytus died but uh, I think they could have brought him back he's like still like going is there still a chance gonna come back as Clytus because oh he knew it was great <laughs> but the whole thing is is uh yeah. in that scene he's forced to do that nonsense like he's playing some sort of primitive game here do this and and I'm like oh god it's a oh, primitive it's, earth game Brendan it's, a primitive, it's like you go here you go here oh dude Brendan it's a primitive game from uh go flash go Go flash. Go. Which which she does. Which they do talk about was entirely Melody Anderson's creation to do the cheering. Because uh, oh. so a great a great okay. Mike Hodges comment is he goes. She went into. I mean, I, eyes wide open, and she. Well, does something fall. Mike Hodges says he goes. I think this might be the biggest budgeted, entirely improvised film ever made. Because <laughs> he goes, wow. we were making this thing up. Day to day, like <laughs> just, yeah. uh, and he That's talks about true. they talk yeah. about. And there are moments where like, mm. he talks but about yeah. the it's just the cooking. the him doing the jump and the yeah thing. He goes, "That was Sam because no, like, no one knew how to end this picture." I mean, they always see that. I'm like, well, that's not the end of the picture, but it is the wrap up of that scene. Yeah, they didn't know how to like. It's yeah. like. Flash, you have saved everybody, yeah. and then him dropping the sword and going, "Yeah, is great improv." Yeah, and that it was like, "Yeah," I saw him went, "Oh, yes, we'll use yeah. that." That's the right. thing. I I it love. Ends up with the, you know, thanks, Flash, and so you're gonna stick around, and the whole thing like, "I'm in New York City, gal. It's, things are just a little too quiet one around my, here for me." One of my favorite uh, Mike Hodge sta Mike Hodge's statements on there too no. is uh, he uh, he talks about. Uh, uh, Dino brought him a giant painting that had been done and he goes well it's beautiful what is it he goes that's your sky for the planet that's the sky and he goes well, what do we do with it and he goes you film it you film it and he goes no no Dino it has to move it can't just be a <laughs> static painting uh, a, a scrim yeah that's yeah. not gonna work and he's just trying to explain to Dino De Laurentiis that like and he's and Dino was just going no no I have painting made <laughs> like just no, and I don't. Actually, that... some of the artificiality works. Well, some but I do think doesn't. he's right about the swirling sky Again, is a about cool Superman look. Superman and yeah. how the the flying scenes looked very Superman four to me, not Superman the movies. Yes, yes. yeah, the, the yeah. green screen with the the, the well because dark what you don't right have right is the uh, the Richard your Richard Donner. Just, being, and they've cleaned it up in the 4K. Even they've they've the actually are just, you know, yeah. That. They, that's one of the things they went in CG and now. cleaned Oof. up a little bit in the 4K. Yeah. Uh, they did clean up some of those as much as they could, right? Like they did By clean the, up those some Hawkman of those Hawkman helmets that have a cannon attached. And I mean, it's just a design. Like, yeah. uh, it's gorgeous. The, the yeah. Hawkman outfits. Yeah. Mm. 
10 out of 10 on those Hawkman outfits. God, they I look. I mean, yeah. again, and when they go to Arborea, again, it doesn't... all these little things where you're going, I, that flew over my head as a kid. The whole thing where the tree men are having that ceremony and yeah. there's that, like, <sighs> <sighs> chanting yeah. and it cuts to Aura who's obviously getting turned on she goes yeah. I love initiation I know and you're like going, that's something I'm like oh that's yeah. a kid going what's happening there yeah and then as an adult I'm like going, oh I get it that's but see I think <laughs> no, that's the thing that she, the kid, and then you're the, just the, thinking oh she just likes being evil <laughs> yes yeah, that's yeah that. and do I, as a kid notice the way the camera's moving around as she's strapped down to be tortured and it's literally just giving us a straight up the leg shot and I'm not as a kid I'm just like, no, that seems terrible. Look, they've they've hurt her in That's the back. Something yeah. that yeah. not sitting there going, Oh, hello. Lorenzo Semple Jr. Once again, Lorenzo Semple Jr. <laughs> his stuff I, I it's I have such appreciation for it because as a kid I was obsessed with this movie and the Batman show, but out of right. total sincerity. And then yeah. you, yes, it, you can grow with these yeah. things. That's what's so great about yeah, them, yeah. and I think that's what keeps them in the pop it culture conscience so much. Consciousness, and because you go it like, is, oh, there's, there's a, there are levels to this. This guy is thinking right. about this. Jo- this, this is, is the a first joke time that plays I here. That Robbie Coltrane was the guy at the airport. Oh yeah, right. That that he's he's the guy that's looking at the skies, worried, and later on he helps with the bags. The other stuff. guy, so, uh, the the creepy um, uh, family murderer from The Shining, is the priest yep. who is marrying Ming and Dale at the end. Yeah. Oh my God. Zogi the high yep. priest. Um, but uh, the other guy, and then speaking of that, the other guy who I noticed, who I'm like. This man... Like, uh, un- until you grow tired of her. And he's like, uh, the whole look... Yeah. We haven't talked enough about yeah. Matt Monsito. Uh, yeah, I'm well, I, but I, can he I just... Since we're, he does, but I just... I don't want to skip... Because we were talking about some smaller roles. I want to get this guy in because I realize this yes. guy is s- s- part of, like, every movie I loved as a child. And that is William Hootkins, who is... Uh, who plays uh, Munson, who is uh, Zarkov's assistant yeah. at the beginning yeah. of the movie. And this is a guy who, once you start to piece together, I'm like, he was in every single one of the most formative movies of my childhood. He's Porkins in Star Wars. He's yep. the government agent guy who recruits Indiana in Jones and the Ark of the Covenant and yep, gets yeah. the top men line at the end. Uh, yep. And uh, uh, yeah, he's cool. Eckhart, man. the fat, corrupt cop in 1989's Batman. Eckhart, oh, think yeah. about the future. Uh, he has one of my favorite lines in that movie when they talk about... They say they saw a bad. Ah, they've been drinking Drano. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, but it was yeah. like this guy. This guy's in Indiana Jones, Batman, Star Wars, and Flash Gordon. Okay. Come on, Justice yeah. for Munson. Justice for Munson. <laughs> Justice for Munson, say. indeed. But just he was he was an American actor. So Munson Munson suffered a similar fate to to Ming. I do. Lo- I mean, that was something again. I never noticed, and I was like, oh, oh, the. The parallels are there. Like yeah, this yeah. low-level dude who's a coward gets essentially run over by uh, a flying vehicle. Yeah. And then at the end, the emperor of the universe suffers the same fate as right. Munson. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's awesome. Plus, someone in the, the notes on IMDb pointed out something that, again, gives me even more respect for Hodges, is the idea that all the shots of Ming from the first of the movie are done low. So he yeah. looms. Yeah. And then yeah. as the movie progresses, then we're looking at him straight on. And by the end, we're looking well, down at him. I'm I, like, right, that right, is right. something you play. Kind of. And that's brilliant. Kind of yeah, like yeah. what it's Marvel right. delivers every single Kind of scene. like what Marvel does today. <laughs> that's actually why I think Hodges is a genius choice, right? You have somebody who's yep. not getting lost in all the right. production design. That stuff's all there, certainly, but you do have a real deal director who is thinking about things like where I place the camera will tell you about yep. the yeah. story. That's what I love about like Marvel hiring so many dramatic indie directors and stuff is like we need people who are going to think about the character arcs, the acting, and then the, you know the hiring Richard Donner Don- who's on really Superman. A journeyman. Oh, Donner! You do, uh, the Omen you can't pin that guy down. Superman the movie is is you, you get a pro in there who doesn't ordinarily do genre stuff. Yeah, to we've, just kill it. And, we've and, talked about um, that. 
too. We don't really have guys like that as much these days. Uh, filmmakers well, yeah, who can do don't really get that anything. chance. Though Marvel Studios has done a great job of pulling people, regardless of whether they are, you know, studio guys. They're looking at the indie up and coming people. They're and pulling saying, a lot do of you people. You want to do a superhero movie, and which I think is great. I know there's a lot of okay a lot of film yeah. nerds are really upset about that. Going, oh, you make a great Sundance movie and then they ruin you by putting you on a big. Su-. I'm like, I think that's great. I think that's awesome that you that like well, John yeah, Watts can make Cop Car and then make Spider Man. You right. know, like uh, yeah, that's that's fantastic yeah. to me. Uh, anyway, no, I, I agree too. Did you guys uh, hear that story of um, uh, Hodges is now pretty old. This would be. Uh, in the early 2000s mm. and uh clive owen who's worked with him twice and yep. croupier, croupier and and Sleep and I'm Dead. both great movies that people should check um, out and uh yeah croupier is dynamite i'll mm-hmm. sleep when i'm dead charlotte rampling anyway. <laughs> i'll um, sleep when i'm dead so, is one people really didn't see and they should because i think that's a real yeah gem of a british they're, gangster they're both movie. very good um so um he clive owen's on the set of children of men and he's working with uh, Michael Caine yeah. and he realizes yeah. that Hodges hasn't seen Caine probably for decades and so he invites him down to the set and just sits back and listens to the two old dudes talk about yeah. you know making Jack yeah. Carter and I mean to me that I mean that's... The, the fact that also you're in this amazing film Children of Men which is a yeah. fucking it's... masterpiece that must have been like, oh, and I get free birthday cake yeah. every day. That's they also, uh, <laughs> they also did Pulp together, Mike Hodges and uh, Michael Caine. If anyone uh, re- yes, Pulp, remembers yes. that movie, which uh, there it's is, exciting. I think, John, you you'll probably know better than me, but it's either a Kino Lorber or a, uh, Arrow Academy. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, that that I've been wanting to. I get. think it's yeah. Kino. I think it is Kino Lorber. Yeah, I have looked at that one as well. Uh, as I've been, yeah. I've been building up my Michael Caine collection actually. Uh, as of, as of recently, there's You're so many. Up your Michael Caine. I swear, I'm getting the Michael Caine. Yeah, I got Jesus, the. Man. I did get there. Uh, I have the Kino Larber 4K of Italian Job, which came out somewhat recently. Oh, me too. Because it's so the great. best. You're only supposed to so blow the bloody great. doors off. Um. Yeah. Uh, when they talk to Caine, and he just goes, "Yeah, everybody comes up to me and says." <laughs> I told you to just blow the bleeding yeah. doors. I mean, it's what he yeah, called his. Uh, blow the bleeding doors. He called his, one of his books that. Blow the bloody doors off. He yeah. called one of his memoirs that. Blow the bloody doors yeah. off. Yeah. Let's talk about Max von Sydow. I know we're all dying to. So, yes, Max von Sydow, who is the thing that's so great. It is one of my so favorite great. things in the world, though, so is guys who are objectively slumming it, who in no way indicate that in their performance. Yeah. And that is you totally watch, you him watch in this. this. And you watch him in Strange Brew, and you're seeing a guy that is not slumming it, but never. actually wishes he could do more of it. I, I have yeah. never or, seen or him. Needful things, for Christ's sake. No, I have. He calls Ed Harris a wuss. <laughs> Good God. I have Are you never. Me with that? Ever seen him and phone it in? Add him to the list of people I, of, of voices I wish I possessed. Oh, because oh. Yeah. Max von <laughs> yeah. voice. Yeah unbelievable implaceable in a lot of ways i mean like you know i mean like he's he's swedish but i feel like not not in the way we we think of a typical swedish accent so it's well actually it's not the accent for me it's just more the way his voice goes it's a deep register yeah but it's when he gets down into the gravel but like and it's not constantly there it's like it's like i'm up here but now i'm choosing to go down that's right but i'm saying but then then you add this accent that's like yeah. Once again, it, it, the Swedish accents are very interesting because there is sort of the the Swedish chef we all think of. But if you hear a lot of guys like right. the Scars Guards kind of, st- and you go like, I don't actually Lena Olin. Yeah, Lena uh, Olin. Uh, uh, we've Inger talked. Bergman. Uh, we've talked about Rebecca Ferguson. Uh, where you're just going like, uh, yeah, where you're just going like, oh, it's actually not. It's not what I think of when I think of Swedish. A lot of right. actual Swedish people don't really sound like that. So, But yeah, literally, he's never been bad in a single thing, even in something <laughs> like the Stallone Judge Dread. He fucking brings it! You know, I mean, oh, like, brings- one oh, scene in Force Awakens, he, he crushes! Good thing in a terrible movie. Yes. I mean, that's pretty much always yeah. the case. Yep. Um, yeah. He still has some of my favorite lines in uh, Hannah and Her Sisters yes. as the artist, the yep. stern artist. Yep. Who, he, when Barbara Hershey comes home 
and he just starts talking about, I was watching some television today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These televangelists keep talking about Jesus and Christ. And <laughs> if Jesus came today to earth and yeah. saw what was being done in his name, <laughs> he'd never stop throwing he'd never up. Stop I, throwing <laughs> it's, no, it's, and that's the thing. I, I, I he's the and kind of guy I love. He kills these lines. He yes. kills them. Well, he's yes. that classically trained guy who clearly yeah. doesn't take himself too seriously, which is, no. I, I think a lot of British or European great actors are more uh, Americans seem to be a little bit more and of course there are examples of both but like in general yeah. it seems like I love there's these preciousness to a lot of the uh, I mean and there's a self-deprecation the Dustin Hoffman Lawrence Olivier divide thing is yeah it, it, there's a preciousness to the method and a lot of American yeah. acting techniques where it is like this holy art yeah. and then you get working actors yeah. who right. from Europe and and the UK who are yeah. like guys we're just playing make em ups all right yeah. it's just yeah. I mean, we take it seriously but it's yeah. just make em ups so yeah. calm down on on all that nonsense and stop dredging up old memories can yeah. you act sad <laughs> then act sad yeah yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. here yeah. Like, vincent price would make fun of that all the time yeah yes he, 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 it wasn't that he had a problem with with method actors he just he, because he could he could improvise as well as anybody but he also saw it from the Karloff standpoint of you go in, you have fun you got with work. the written line. Yeah. 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 You know, and, yeah. and, uh, uh, Von Cedow, I'm going to bring up another one because I, I, I <laughs> love the guy so much. Yeah. If you haven't seen minority report, wow. Oh, yeah. God bless. God it damn it. Just the... one of the great, Great. Probably one of my favorite Spielberg movies. Of this uh, unquestionably, I love it so much. And I have a. I have Is it a. It's prescient. It's a movie um, that grows no, more I, prescient. It's more because Spielberg took this thing and said to Scott Frank, "I want to make a Hitchcock movie." Yep. Yeah. Ah, oh, I uh, I adore that movie. In that direction, and it is a perfect. If Hitchcock did science fiction. Yep. Movies. Yes. A it masterpiece. Really perfect. A masterpiece, really. I do think that is an underappreciated Spielberg classic. Um, oh, my God. When, love when that When Cruz movie. nails uh, Von Cito. It's one of Cruz's best performances. Oh, my God. It's one of Cruz's it's, best it's, performances, too. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, him and this, impressive. though. You have Ming the Merciless. Yeah. Um, who... But I this is a t say, you could walk through I this part. Detected a bit of mercy anywhere. In it. <laughs> no, he, no, he, he did played. Not have mercy I mean, listen, Brendan. right? Brendan. It is. It is. Brendan, the, it was scientifically measured. He does not have mercy. I will say. I mean, also, he pushes the hot uh, hail button right at the start. As, as impossible as it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. He may be better than Charles Middleton. <laughs> may, just maybe. <laughs> To original Ming the Merciless. Yeah, just I know. maybe. Buster Crab looks a lot more like the Flash Gordon from the comic strip. But even yeah. he, I mean... But he's asked to also play the cardboard cutout of the comic strip in that, right? Like, Yeah, because, I mean, the serials are that. Yeah, and I can't... Middleton is a fine, you know, like, evil villain. Yeah. But you have Max von Sydow, who actually, while playing the most cartoonish villain of all time... Yeah. is still putting shadings in there. Yep. And the whole thing about him right there at the end when he dies, and he just can't oh, What a believe. death scene. Like, literally, he's like going, uh, the emperor of the universe cannot be destroyed by just by a mere human. earthling. Yeah, by yeah, human. earthling, yeah. It's oh. in his face. He's like, is this happening? And it's so good. <laughs> it's so, it's so and good. And by the way, I, I the way, the the way he stares down the... the the spaceship as it's coming in with the yes. the the spear point at the end oh of it. He's just like, are you I mean, kidding me? Also, <laughs> what what better yeah, way? Really? What the end of Little Rico? What yeah. better way? Um, have you guys seen um, Little Caesar? Never say never again. Of yes. course. <laughs> okay, I I haven't seen it all the way it's through. It's terrible. What? It's terrible. Uh, yeah, but it's but Von Cito is Blofeld. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Right. I think uh, I, I think there's I some good. You haven't seen it. Uh, it's, it's 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 bad. Um, <laughs> it's no, it's all right. It's I mean, I, look, I'm the biggest Bond nerd there is, uh, except maybe next to my 
the previously mentioned friend Ibrahim Mustafa. Um, but uh, the uh, it's bad. However, Von Sydow's good, and Klaus Marie Brandauer as the as the villain is in. He he doesn't realize as, he's as in. The yeah, he d- he doesn't realize he's in a, 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 a an offshoot like crap Bond movie. He well, is he is. is uh, what's her name? Um, Hottie actress. Oh, Barbara Carrera is also great in it. Barbara, Barbara, Barbara Carrera, Carrera is having the time of her is, life really? in it. And you're like, no, no, no. Yeah, she's really <laughs> she's 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 crazy in that movie. Um, but yeah, she is right. all in. <laughs> all in, man. So there are things to like, but it doesn't work. Um, and it's certainly a lesser okay. thunderball. Um, well, I, but I, 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 I was, I was wondering because I've, I've been. And it's, it it's anyway. It is Connery too old to be doing a Bond movie that isn't He's about him about being him. old. Like if, if yeah. the movie was really about yeah. Bond being an old man, that'd be one thing. But it is like you're still trying to play '60s Bond, but you're '80s Connery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. it's tough. Uh, but yes, Von Cena. Oh, but I was just gonna say, what a perfect way to kill Ming the Merciless too, impaled by the end of a rocket. Oh, and the green yeah. blood on it too. And yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that they don't it's death in this movie. By the way, I love again. Yeah. It's all comic strip. Yeah, it's like. Well, okay, this one bleeds green, this one bleeds blue. Yeah. Right. Uh, when they killed General Carla and she just turns into black ink yeah. falling out of her yeah. I'm like, yeah. What are they on? The the the, the, yeah. the guy who gets long. bitten by the yeah. creature in the tree and he's got the green yes. goo seeping out of his hand yeah, and he's yeah, yeah. begging Prince There's Baron to kill him so he doesn't go mad. That aren't from the comic strip that I think are even equal in awesomeness, like the idea from the very moment they step off of Mongo, and then also when uh, Aura is strapped down, it's those uh, animated gauntlets, like using the ring yeah. and firing yeah. a gauntlet at something, and it grab. I'm like, that's not from the comic strip, but it's great. What an awesome yeah. idea! It's so yeah. good. So, well, there yeah. are little things in this where I'm like, going, Alex Raymond himself would have gone, oh, that's pretty cool. There are no, things where it's like the costuming of like the lizard men. You're like, okay, so their eyes are inside their mouth. I yeah. love the lizard men. I'm so yeah. glad you brought that up. I was like, that was a big I love, thing for me. It was like, I didn't remember the lizard men being so cool. I love the yeah. lizard yeah. men. And even better, I love that they call them lizard men. They're not called, yeah. you know, some, they're well, just like, because they're called hawk men. They're called the, I right, love, that's right. what I love and, about this. They're just like, what do you want to call them? In Buck Rogers, they would call. Princess Ardala would call Tiger Man Tiger yeah. Man, you know, like because that is from Buck Rogers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. But it's, they it's, didn't make them just like in this where what's with the Tiger Men and the Lion Men where they don't even bother to try to make them look because in the comic strips the Tiger Men are Tiger Men. Yeah, Tiger Man. And in Buck Rogers the TV show it was just a bald muscle dude, and yeah. I think they painted a couple of stripes on his head. Man. But that yeah. was another thing in the in the documentary about the Rogue version where they just kept going it's like Rogue saw. This was an alien world. Everything was alien. And you just go like, I don't know that I would. I, I would have been fast. Rogue, Rogue's is one of those things. It's sort of like the Yodorowsky Dune thing too as well, right? Where yeah. you go like, that would have been interesting, but not what I want either. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, that's just like Tim Burton's Superman. Right, where you go like, I'm fascinated. A friend John's documentary. Yeah. I'm like, that would have been fascinating. Now that I know more about it, I would have yeah. loved to have seen it, but yeah. that is not what I wanted. No, it's yeah. sort of, and that's the yeah. thing with Ro- But still, the best thing is Michael Allen. Uh, I said who's still credited with story by, but he goes, uh, he goes, when Nick and I saw the movie they made, we were destroyed. Like they were just like, no, it's a joke. <laughs> oh my God. We weren't. Wow. We were trying to do something. And he goes, yes, I have a story by credit on it but that was not what I envisioned. And you just go like, okay. And, and, and wow. Truly, you know, oh, I get it. But at the same time, to say I was destroyed by it and they ruined it, it's like, yeah. no, they gave wow. us their version. Yeah. And, uh, and it sounds and a they lot of people enjoyed you from it. from making another Zardoz is what they did. Well, because yeah. that's what it sounds It is like, okay, I, you, one could go, maybe they could have made something more serious. But what you guys sounded like you were trying to make is way too serious and also yeah, yeah. not Flash Gordon. They, 
This yeah, is more Flash Gordon than what they. Two thousand one that nobody wanted. Yeah, it's well, Superman. It's Star Trek: The Motion <laughs> Picture Star all over Trek again. The Motion Picture. Thank you. Yeah, it's right. just exa- yeah. exactly. Yeah, they're I, too smart for the which, source material, and you're like, no, people want the source material which because that's why they're there. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know there are those fellow Trekkies out there who adore that movie. I don't get it. I, I've watched it I many it, times. I appreciate it. There are only for the scenes in which the yeah. actors that we've missed interact with yeah. each other. The first like, 20 okay. minutes is great. It's okay. It's just okay. It's yeah, pretty see, boring, though. That's, that's Robin's mm-hmm. thought. Pretty, it's, it's pretty it's boring. So hot. It's, it's a lot of it's fair. very boring. It's really not. <laughs> and the director's cut does not save it. Because I know somebody's going to watch the. You know, I've you seen know, the director's cut. You know cut. what you want from a Star Trek movie? Not silent running. Yeah. That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although, I have recommended this before. It's sung by Mike and the Mechanics. It's an awesome song. I have uh, recommended this before. Go watch the first teaser trailer. For Star Trek: The Motion Picture, know. which is narrated by Orson Welles, by Orson Welles, and he's yeah, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's doing William Shatner is Captain Kirk, and he's going like, "This yeah. is amazing!" <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that that's that's, good. that's as good as the they, movie. <laughs> they needed to shoot that trailer as the movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, by the way, d- come on, actually, Star Trek: The Motion Picture with an Orson Welles villain. There's your movie. If he was, oh. give make him just the voice of a god cloud <laughs> planet. <laughs> yeah, but make him the That's voice of a god cloud. Very yeah. proud of my easy joke. Yeah, he and was a large man in his later him. years. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we haven't really big, talked about. Big, big man. Of course, we all know, but like <laughs> we've alluded to, but we have to talk about the soundtrack because I do think, once again, like oh. more than half of why this movie is awesome <laughs> is <laughs> is that Queen is scoring an even bigger, more exciting movie than what's on screen. You know what I mean? Like, yes. the movie they right. are seeing and their music is it, yeah. it's so epic. And it is the coolest story. That's And so I love what's on the screen, but then that's taken to the next level going, no, listen to the music and the theme this guy has. I love the fact he that, rules. again, when Freddie Mercury sits down and writes lyrics, because, you know, he was the lyricist, yeah. and all, oftentimes also wrote the music, and I don't right. know if and let's be, May is more... Let's be honest, he was, he was, and so he was the band. The, I mean, you know, it's like when whenever I see Queen come no, through no, town... No, see Brian May. Uh, he's Brian he's May, but I'm just saying... genius. But I'm saying that when Queen is out touring now, I go... They're a very nice cover band. I oh, mean, you, really, you, it you, is. Yeah, like, you, you need your Freddie. But the yeah. thing is, is that yeah. he, instead of him just doing like nonsense lyrics, mm-hmm. and yeah, Flash Ah, ah which I find interesting simply because those are the same syllables. He could have gone Flash Go. Yeah. Instead, he goes <laughs> Ah, ah, ah and you're like going, Oh, that's what I wanted. And it's Wait, so by, I thought I thought the lyrics were Flash and Dale. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And Zarkov too. When he goes into when he writes the lyrics of that opening theme, it's hilarious how he just goes. You know, it's not enough to talk about a guy who goes to a planet, another planet, and saves Earth. Uh-huh. Instead, he makes Flash Gordon mythical. Yeah, where it's like just a man with a man's courage. Oh, you know, only the pure in heart can find the golden grail. And you're like, uh. he doesn't do any of that. But you've made him but he's a made demigod. Him. Yes. And you're like, that is perfect. And he didn't save just a couple people. He saved every one of us. He saved every one of us. Fights <sighs> for every one of us. Freddy. And, and luckily, the you Hawkmen knew. were able to hear that song. Yes. And come up with this great coordinated... Blue Angels esque salute, yes, <laughs> yes. To Flash. Yeah, yeah. and that Thanks. must have taken some time, Flash. Brendan. It it yeah. must have taken a little bit of time and an explanation of what English uh, looks like. And, and sure, uh, it's like oh, well, Alpha you Num- notice Ming's special controls. They're all yes, very well labeled. Well, like I, I said, I, I mentioned earlier, my favorite was, hot hail is my favorite. Obviously, hot hail <laughs> was great, but the whole thing is is very funny to me. Simply because everywhere they talk about Mingo's Central Time, and they do all these like, yeah, it, yeah. even the the target Mingo on his miles. screen doesn't have north, east, south, and west. They're like weird, like X deep bop boop bop. Yeah. yeah. But they have Clytus going like the pla- the residents refer to it as the planet Earth. 
Uh, so they've never heard of it before until yeah. he's telling them, and yet he has a button that says earthquake. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, it it, it, and, it is what yes, it is. And tornadoes, <laughs> tsunami. He's got the yeah. buttons. But yes, I just I do love Ming just uh, causing calamities for his own joy as well. Talk about merciless. Well, Ooh. yeah, and, and I love the scene where he, he offers Flash uh, to be king of uh, the yeah. Earth or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and the way he explains, like, uh, well, we're gonna kill Zarkov because Zark. Uh, anytime somebody suspects that we exist, we it's we want to actually wanna kind wipe of. Them out. Lorenzo Simple, I, I had read this. I, I think it's, he did say this in interviews, and I don't know if I believe it. Yeah. But when he got the gig, he was like going, I just went off my memory of the comic strip, which I loved as a kid. And I'm like going, no, it hues way too closely. So I'm pretty sure yeah. you went to, even if there weren't collections available at the time, you probably went to a library and looked well, at I mean microfiche of old newspaper strips because it's so dead on. But he also, like a good writer... He didn't think he was above the material, mm. but he wanted to explain it better than it was in a comic strip in 1934. Right. In the original, the, like the first two strips, the planet Mongo just shows up in our solar system aiming for Earth. Ming is literally right. going to crash Mongo into Earth, which is why, De I mean, wow. Professor Zarkov is like, we've got to stop them somehow. Yeah. And you're like, that that's, doesn't that's, work. That doesn't that's work. Doctor Who level Stuff yeah, there. so he comes up with this uh, <laughs> vortex, which is basically like th the planet Mongo itself isn't really moving, but it can aim at people through this vortex, and he can cause all these disasters. Great, that's well thought out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he comes up with an explanation, which is all of the planets I've taken over, all the peoples I've conquered. Yeah, it's I test them first. Yeah, I I, yeah. I start messing with their planet, and if they go god is angry at us or it's like oh this is just we don't know what's up he goes i'll leave them alone because they're dumb dumbs but right if, if that species goes we're being attacked that means they're too smart so then i take that planet over right I'm, right right it's pretty damn smart it's actually yeah. a good explanation it's really yeah, good it was great it has to deal with the guilt of like wait because i figured it out i'm the reason earth is going to be destroyed well, right 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 <laughs> Yeah, thought you liked the enough. thing. The thing that's yeah, interesting, and, and, uh, and the thing where he, he does the classic, you know, it would have been so great. In another life, we would have been friends, you know. Yeah, that kind yeah. of thing with uh, Flash. Yeah, it's like he, you know, again, Von Cena like just you. kills that. He well, kills it, I think and the, whole the way he's like, kind of walking around you, him as he's talking. And, yeah, he's like, you could be a prince of of any kingdom of Mongo. <laughs> I'll give you one. Yeah. In fact, and he goes, all you got to do. And you, your planet will be safe. All you got to do is step down. And plus, I'm going to take Dale and populate the Earth. Yeah. And Flash is like, no way, mister. Yeah. It's I think the classic I... Jesus and Satan moment where it's like, yeah, right. uh, Satan going like, I can make you a king. Yeah. And then yeah. Jesus going, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> and in this case, Satan is a badass, bald Swedish man. Yeah. Who played Satan. Jesus. Thick ass eyebrows and great facial hair. Von Cito yeah. was Jesus. And, and he's into some kinky shit. And he's also, the, yeah. I love the physicality of Ming. I mean, he is very regal, but also there's that thing he constantly does, which is the the clenching of his hand yep. in the gauntlet. Yeah. Yeah. And he does it not overly, but every time he does it, it's chills. I'm like going, that is a freaking emperor. And well, he's been for centuries, too. He's like going, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just kind I also of love the way they navigate the obvious trouble of uh you know the the sort of asian fu manchu villain is it's it's yeah. there but it von Cito in no way leans into it in his performance the millicent the, doesn't either no i mean going back to the, the I right think even in the serial back then they're like going well it's coded because yeah. they do give him the kind of Slanted well, but eyes. but I like that they give everybody the the eye makeup in this. Like that's just part of it. Because I one of my favorite and it probably does feel like a improv, just the way it's tossed off, is when Flash and Dale meet up. Lady he goes, Dale, you look completely different. She just goes, it's the eye makeup. And then they, <laughs> I just thought that was yeah, so yeah. funny. She just goes, yeah, yeah, no, it's the and eye makeup. The thing, Move on. That had to be improvised. Thing, even like, in the comics, just the way she says it. They they backed off of that, which is yeah. I guess I got to tip the hat because in the earliest 
you know, strips in the color strips. Yeah. Yeah. All like, of Mongo, like they are yellow. Or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all yeah. Yellow. yeah. And then even mm -hmm. in the comic strip by like year two, they're just they're just Caucasian. It's yeah. like the features are still, they got the eyebrows and the, yeah. right. you know, like, no, there's this a, is a different planet. There's an Asian quality hey, have, to it, but did, it's did expanded. Did they have a radio show of Flash Gordon too? They had to have. I don't. They must I have, don't. right? That seems insane well, that they would. definitely did, but I don't. Yeah. Well, let me, I'm going to no. look it up. Uh, it feels like, how could they have missed that? Max, you got to spend more time in your books, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I've let you down. Here you go. The Amazing <laughs> Interplanetary Adventures of Flash Gordon, a uh, radio program that when? aired uh, from April to October of 1935. April to October? Yeah. Okay, not a very long-lasting wow. one. Uh, they made 20, as long as the Doc 26 Savage episodes. Radio, yeah. They made 26 yeah, episodes. Doc Savage only had like 18 episodes or something. Yeah, it just yeah, seems yeah, impossible yeah. that somebody wouldn't have at least tried, right, to do it. Um, well, yeah, they and, only... And the the think, I mean, I, I don't understand... Too. Yeah. Have, Brendan, have you seen the... Um, there have been, like, two live-action Flash Gordons in the past, yeah. like, 20 years or something. You'd think that the this type of serialized adventure where, you know, in the comic strips... He spends like a year on uh, Arborea or something, and he spends yeah, like yeah. another year meeting another group of people. Yes, just going and from you, kingdom you think to that kingdom. this would work really well for TV? Well, they tried. Well, they've never had the budget. That 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 was the show, that was the problem with the sci-fi show. They they just didn't have the resources. Just, and so what they did was again we've modernized it and by modernized no. it's like okay ming's just this fascist dictator and on another planet which looks a lot like calgary yeah you know yeah it's just he's it. he's uh oh. he's trudging the out like back alien of... planets look like cardiff brennan <laughs> yeah alien Dr. planets Hare. look like cardiff oh. they all look like uh rock quarries in rock uh, quarries, in the uk yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of filters but, I mean, i'm looking at photos from there's a lot of like red filters on the camera and stuff like that it wasn't good. It wasn't a good no. reimagining, and it was mainly just budget. Yeah, but this is looked like every other sci-fi channel show. We're we're gonna do another Flash Gordon. Yeah. I cross my fingers and go, please. I mean, updating is fine. It doesn't have to be set in the 30s or anything. Well, I but mean, this this version does keep that. The, keep keep the straight ahead adventure thing and don't I, mock it. Just yeah, let it be. Classic. It is. I the believe. Flash, have lion men and lizard men and shark men and all that stuff. When I did my fan fiction story, which never got finished because it turned into a novella and it just kept yeah. going, which was my Flash Gordon Buck Rogers crossover. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Is that the the thing when Buck Rogers ends up on Mongo and Flash has been dead for centuries because it's right. you know, but the whole thing is that the people of Mongo go, oh, that's not what those people are called. That's what Flash Gordon kept. Because he just could only refer to them in Earth By what terms. they look like. like. Yeah, those are hawk men. Those yeah. are tiger and That's lion fun. men. Right, and, right, kind right, of right. and I was like, yeah, I like that. Well, Instead I think... Instead of them who don't know Earth saying, we are hawk men. You're like, what are hawks? The, the Why thing do you know I, what that is? Yeah, the, yeah. Thing I, uh, the thing I worry about trying to do Flash Gordon again, of course, is the same thing that happened with John Carter, which is people just go... This is just lesser star. Like this is just that people don't like understanding where That's Flash Gordon fits into the pop culture thing is like, like a lot of the pulp characters. You're going, why would I watch The Shadow when I can watch Batman? Now we wouldn't say that, but to a lot of people, they just go, this just feels like n not quite the thing I know, and it's weird. And yeah, then you right. trying to go, no, Star Wars comes from this. They're like, I don't yeah. care. The, you know, I mean, it's just I don't know that. I, I think. <laughs> I, I feel like people just aren't going to go to a Flash Gordon, and even if the movie's good. Silently to myself. I know it's well. That's that's all. That's yeah, our okay. whole. Right. Right. That's the whole sad thing people about the, people didn't go to this. I mean, they were planning to make sequels to this. They had Sam Jones right. for uh, contracted for two more. Where it, I mean, and it deserves it. But what's weird is it did just build over time, where yeah. people forgave yeah. it eventually for not being Star Wars. And yeah, I don't think it like bombed, but it didn't on its own merits. It's, yeah, it's. Fun. And that was my well, own struggle it with it because grew, I wanted I mean, something straight and the, I got something the kind of campy. Like a lot of Here 80s you. oddball, early 80s, late 70s oddball movies, this and Popeye and Xanadu yep. um, yeah. had varying degrees of 
it they did okay. Yeah, this not made were considered flops. This made twenty seven. This made twenty seven million dollars on a twenty million. Decades later, kids have grown up. Like generations have grown up on watching these things. That's me. And yeah, love it. Yeah, that's the thing. To me, also, Flash Gordon people, wasn't a bomb. It was just a movie that about this cool guy in space. We our age, which sadly, John, we're much older than you. Yeah, but I know people, people are surprised. Kids, I think by that. And, yeah. Yes, people saw this as kids. You, yeah. as you're younger. By the time we got to our teens and yeah. and young adulthood, then we could watch movies by choice through rental, right? And, yeah. or even buy them outright. So that was yeah. the whole new life because, you know, unless NBC decided to do a Sunday night movie where they showed Flash Gordon. Right. You you had your one chance when it was in theaters in 1980. And then yeah. by the time the technology of home video comes along, we're like, oh, I loved that when I was eight. Now we own it and we've I've replaced it a few times in I, VHS, I have, DVD, and now I've right. got Blu-rays. And I think, I, yeah, I was thinking about this. I think I've owned, Flash, Flash Gordon is one of the handful of movies I've owned on every format. I had a VHS of it as a kid. I oh, then got yeah. the DVD, then the um, Blu-ray. Now I have the 4K, you know. I think I've owned uh, Flash that, Gordon on every format. Be, it's a mad, 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 mad world for Yeah, me. I think I mean, there's a handful. <laughs> I mean, obviously the Star Wars movies are another one for me. Superman, I've owned you know, Brendan, everything. it's the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> It's not, Robin. It, it is. It's come up. Charms. The greatest. I like it. I'm never going to deny it. I like it. I enjoy yeah. it. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Yeah, it's a good it's, one. I think it's, it's good. Great. Yeah. It's um, great in concept. But I, I no. do think. Execution. Also. Execution. I, th I think the other thing, I was watching this last night and thinking about this when you talk about the, the, the these weird things. This movie is just maybe a little. And a lot of 80s stuff I love, sci fi and fantasy. They were just a little too weird for what the public was looking for. Star Wars was just yeah. the right amount of weird. But this right. Right. or David Lynch's Dune a few years later or, uh, I mean, uh, we've talked about Kroll before, uh, which I know I'm more of a fan like of Kroll. than you are, Brendan. Um, I, I like but, yeah, I know you don't like Kroll, it's, it's but like boring. it's okay. It's so boring. You know, I'm not saying it's Kroll amazing, okay. but I'm, but I'm saying like <laughs> there's a lot of these movies that have okay. these cult followings now because they're they're yes. they're weird. Yeah. They're they're real. Like you watch this, yeah, Bucker watching this Bakker Bonsai. Bonsai. Had, um, uh, uh, speaking yeah. of another one that had an awesome Queen soundtrack, Highlander. Highlander. It's like yeah, that was an instant yeah, yeah. cult film. Yeah, because the mass populace is like. I don't know. Even and even Buck Rubanza, of course. Even something like yeah. the Terminator gained oh, good. its traction over video Terminator. primarily. You know, I mean, like Terminator, yeah. you know, was like a mild hit and then became a massive hit when people were able to rent it. Like it, it's it's interesting yeah. that, that yeah, a lot of these things were tough you know, to sell. Powers had a similar thing. The first movie didn't do well right. in the theaters, but uh, once it went on cable and you could rent it, yeah, it had this huge response that made new line want to make a sequel yeah it's yeah. it's it's very interesting to me that like i but i always am just trying to figure out like what in the calculation of the mix that is star wars is just the right amount of weird that it was able but just enough mainstream that that was able to but then when other people did it's like nah this is too strange even when lucas tried to do it again with like willow and stuff like that it's still like Oh, this is pretty yeah. weird, man. I don't know the about ones this. That hit versus the ones that don't is yeah. odd. I think St Star Wars. Could you go like Star Wars is pretty weird still? I mean, but it is. But I think oddly the textures of it, meaning um, the '70s film stock, all the beige and the yeah. beat up spaceships and stuff, that was revolutionary for the time. And it didn't feel kitty, even though it's definitely a kitty movie. Yeah. It's sitting there weirdly set to blow you away in a visual style that doesn't feel like Batman the TV show where they're right. like, oh, all the bright colors right. back off. And you feel comfortable with like, I'm really in a different universe. Yeah, there's just something about the calculator. With Star Wars, it took the uh, level of special effects sophistication from... 2001 a space that's Odyssey, true yeah, and yeah. made it fun and made something that was edited 
to the rhythm of a World War II film. Right. No, know, it, it's of, a of, of you know that kind of. It's dog the ingredients in the. Like it's that. it's definitely the ingredients in the stew. But I do think the thing that that creates it's still is magical because it's it's uh, story wise. I mean, yes, Joseph Campbell stuff aside, yeah. Hero's Journey, but at the same yeah. time, story wise, Star Trek, uh, I mean, Star Trek, sorry, Star Wars <laughs> is so much weirder than Flash Gordon. Yeah, it, I mean, it, no, it absolutely is. It, it's like <laughs> Jedi and Matt, Clone there's, Wars there's space and, wizard knights, right. you know, I mean, yeah. And the Force it yeah. is weird. Yeah. No, but I think the I mean, thing of Flash Gordon just. But I think the thing about that, that is, of course, and the cult appeal of all this, right, is that. I hold Flash Gordon closer in some ways than Star Wars, even though I love Star Wars more, but because Star Wars belongs to everyone. But the people who yeah. find these movies like this and are just like, yeah, but dude, Flash Gordon, that's like my movie. Even though, as we talk about now, I think it has enough of a cult following that, you know, I mean, when Seth MacFarlane is making big budget studio movies and recreating yeah. shots from this, like, that, right. you know, there's, I mean, it helps that he made that at Universal, which owns the rights to this. So they were able to use that right. footage for free and, yes. and the music. Um, uh, they really missed out on an opportunity. We occasionally bring up, just because, you know, when you cover genre films, sometimes people incorporating the logo of the production studio, like Paramount with yeah. uh, obviously the Indiana Jones things where it's always the mountain yeah. and it turns right. into uh, yeah. Indiana Jones is looking up at a mountain. Uh -huh. With this one, Universal, you've got the planet Earth spinning right there, and then we yeah. cut to a different version of view of planet Earth yeah. with the target around it. I'm like, why didn't they just take the dude? If they, I don't know, the, I don't know if Universal yeah, still yeah, yeah. has the rights, but if they do, and whoever makes it should start their movie like that. If it is, it's they still should. It's still yeah, at, yeah. at least at the moment, I believe Taika Waititi is still. Uh, attached and to direct I flash. Trust him. I just I don't think that's want it to be goofy. I worry about the it's goofy. gonna be goofy. I don't I I, 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 I don't I, want it to be but goofy. I feel like if it's too serious then it's not fun either. But he though. does goofy with heart, Brennan. He does do goofy and that's why I'm saying like, I think he like does do goofy I think like heart. what Guardians of the Galaxy does for as the well. People. Because I actually so I actually right. feel like in in a lot of ways what James Gunn has done with Guardians of the Galaxy is a more palatable version of this. It is wild True. and colorful yeah. and weird but it's that's story funny of an earth person who we can relate to star lord is, is very flash weird, gordon i mean universe well we know this yeah. i mean when you, you read original star lord in the comics and he's just straight up flash gordon right i mean like it's just it's not yeah, even right it's not even couched no there's, uh, there's no peter <laughs> Cole from the movies in the original no he's star just Wars. a total flash gordon copy he's not running around with like a, a walkman and listening to no that's i mean that is the thing but like i do think i do think that's why i think somebody so sure with they're purists like comics purists which i'm certainly not one but i know they're probably <laughs> comics purists who take offense and like going not my star lord Sorry, yeah, man. and that's my I, Star Lord isn't goofy. I've, we've talked about this. Yeah. That's something I always love. Is anytime they make a movie with anybody and they change something, even if it's the most obscure character, there is somebody out there going, "That is the greatest character Marvel's ever." And it's just like, oh, maybe well, are, they're sincere. Maybe with they're sincere. Vigilante in the Peacemaker, which I loved Peacemaker, but I was like going, "Oh, Brennan, <laughs> Judge Adrian Chase, the Vigilante becomes this guy." What? Yeah, pretty fucking fun I, though. Uh, when I watched uh, Peacemaker, all I could think in my head was, "Brendan is not approving of this." <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. I loved Peacemaker, and I don't hold yeah. that character to any kind because he's almost. A, I mean, he was immediately a parody the second DC bought him, and they're like, "Oh, he's our goofy take on Punisher." Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Right. But they um, it was deadly serious, and I'm like, oh. If but, they if they ever make a, another Flash Gordon, the actor who plays Flash is going to yes. be the most important casting. Well, yeah. that's that's because a big if thing. They don't find a guy who could be, you know, a Harrison Ford or yeah. or a Billy Campbell. Someone or, sincere. Well, the thing someone about sincere, yeah. who has humor. But yeah. it not humor at the cost the expense of, of the character. The, the guy, the, the guy, character. I think could do yeah. it. I've suggested him before because uh, I keep thinking he should play a superhero in something. Is Glenn Powell, who's in? Uh, you keep bringing up Glenn Powell. Top Gun Maverick. He's got. Does he send you money? Because you bring him up every. <laughs> I bring him up a lot because I think this guy's John, got a real. You know, he's yeah. in a relationship with Sydney Sweeney. So well, that's what really the press say, and they did whatever. Anyway, they had that big hit rom com <laughs> so out chemistry. this year. 
They have. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? We're still at a place. I mean, they have to be doing. I love that. Oh still to this day, we are in a place where people can't figure out that people having chemistry in a movie does not mean that they're having sex in real. It's just like there's no way. There's no way these two could be Madame acting twice. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, she didn't have this kind of chemistry with anyone in Madam Web, so she must be screwing this guy. Otherwise, I don't understand. Oh it's my it's. God. But anyway, I do think he I has. Read, I read a review of the way she just goes. Uh, Madam Webb was me just trying to start a relationship with Sony. Really, I'm just going to do stuff I produce from now on. Yeah, and I'm that's I, I, and I, I <laughs> yeah, that's no good for her. Exactly, she's somebody I'm still, yeah. as I've said many times before, I'm still not sold on her as a movie star, but I'm but I'm open to it. I'm still waiting for her to. Just, she proved a lot to me with White Lotus. No, I, I mean, think she's yes, got it's talent. A character I don't think was much of a stretch for, her, but she did a really. I good think job she's talent, and so. I've recommended the movie Reality, which was on. Um, uh, oh, HBO, yeah, I which I think she's amazing. Tiny little indie movie, uh, really, really good okay. in that. But so I think she's got the talent. But I, but it is sort of a thing about Hollywood really wants to turn her into this like Marilyn Monroe sex bomb, and and we know what happened to Marilyn Monroe, who was also somebody with a lot of talent who they tried to. So you know, a lot of wonderful movies. Caution. What, what are you saying? But uh, <laughs> but I, I let no, me say this. I, I have. She was delightful. So, so many. Yeah, she lived such a happy life too. So many people I, have tried I, I, to. I, the jury's still out for me on um, on Glenn Powell, but I think Jack Quaid has a lot of. Jack Quaid is Jack also Quaid potential. Still looks like a fifteen year old and always will. That's the only problem with Jack Quaid. And I, I mean, love Jack Quaid. The the I obvious. Love Jack Quaid. You know, a Hollywood studio is going. Tyke is directing this. Hemsworth. And I, Hemsworth could be Flash Gordon. I don't think he'd want to do it though. He doesn't have to be as big. No, but I, I don't think he. I don't he, think he'd uh, want to do it because I think he doesn't need to build himself. But like I'm that. saying I think because he's done Thor, I think that's kind of reductive for him as an actor. I can't. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see him wanting to do that. Be interested in doing more stuff like I that. Think that I, I find think find unknown. Um, well, that, like yeah. Brendan Sam J. Jones. Brendan, God, that is. I swear that's been your suggestion for every time we talk about any superhero. You're like find an unknown. Very hard to do. Well, here uh, it's very hard to do. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, also very hard to times... sell Flash Gordon. You kind of need a star because Flash Gordon don't sell tickets, sadly. Uh, uh, the star will always be you. You cast someone like uh, for Ming as the big well, star, that's, that, or yeah. you get like the the actress of the moment to be Dale. Dale, yeah. But the reason yeah. the the reason you do that with IP projects is, and this is where I know that. This is my naivete, but it's what I do believe. Yeah. The characters, the IP, and I'm glad we're on the IP squad to be talking about it. <laughs> yeah. They're more important. The, uh, the the character is more important than the actors they get. If they get the right person, then that actor will rise and people will love him. Like Christopher Reeve, who was, you know, yeah, I, Juilliard and all that. And yeah. no one knew okay. him outside of New York theater. Sure. But it doesn't. It's not like they took a guy off the street. They took a very well trained, no, no, good yeah, actor. of course, yeah. But they found the right guy. Yeah. But the thing is, the characters we're talking about: Flash Gordon, Superman, Tarzan, whoever it is. Yeah. The characters are more important. Well, they and, they, they, and they are. To, uh, this is what I'm saying. Find the right person. Flash Gordon is a sell, though, we right? Don't shove a star into. Well, this. no, I don't. I'm not I saying mean, you shove Michael a star. Keaton, the reason that worked so well for Batman, yes, he was already a big star, but he was unlikely, and only Tim Burton saw that he could do it. It's and it turns out Tim Burton was right, but still, the, the character is is where we meet that person, and then we go, yeah, you were a great Batman. Well, it's interesting actually. Bat Michael Batman, Keaton Batman is one of the rare the super Oscars. Yeah, last week. Oh. It's I'm telling the, you. It's the best thing ever. A couple weeks ago, actually, Rob. Well, yeah, and, ago, and, and a couple months ago by the time this comes out. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, because we are, we, spoiler, anyway, we record I, these I, ones. I take back Jack Quaid, and now, of course, <laughs> uh, the obvious choice is Cord Overstreet from Glee. Right. <laughs> For Flash Cord. Uh, actually, that is. actually, he does. You don't know Cord Overstreet? If is? you look him up, he does look he like Flash. Look him seasons. He does uh, actually he look is, like uh, Flash Gordon. Dude, yeah. as interesting as his name. Yeah, he does look like Flash Gordon. Is exactly right. Uh, I do. Visually, he looks like Flash Gordon. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if he. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I have no. I don't expect them to actually make a Flash Gordon. So oh, many people. Guy. Yeah, so many people yeah. 
have been attached to do it. So many directors have flirted. I, I just don't think anyone's really, really willing to put the money in. That is because I think that's the thing ultimately, right? Is a studio is going. I'm it's sorry, this is going to cost what? Dollars. It's going to cost they, us what? Oof. Even if they just port it over, uh, which would be a mistake, but the uh, the biggest mistake would be leaving out the the queen score. Well, you yeah, know I mean, that even if they to. make it yeah. tomorrow and it's deadly serious, yeah. it yeah. would be a huge mistake not to have the dum dum dum. Well, it's the thing about yeah, yeah, we yeah, mentioned probably. Highlander. They're remaking Highlander right now, and I already I'm one of them going. We have to use at least "Who Wants to Live Forever," if not the other Queen songs. Yeah, oh my that God. you can't. It's impossible. You, that that just is yeah. that movie, and I am very cautious about that Highlander remake. I like the people involved. It's David Leach directing. It's uh, Henry Cavill is playing McCloud. I'm like, okay, still you're very famously. You still love that RoboCop remake. I actually don't hate that RoboCop remake. Believe oh, it or not. No. The, well, the best best thing in it is uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah. No, but I, 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 here's the <laughs> thing. Keaton I, makes everything here is, better. Here's my, here is my statement. And it's by great. the way, by the way, people who know me know Ro- RoboCop will be a future season of this show. There's no question. We're going to talk about RoboCop sure. movies. But uh, at least that did try to do its own thing. At the, that, that I will say. I, yes. I appreciate. And sometimes at its peril. There are things in it that work. It's it's a flawed movie. There are good ideas in it. I wish they had taken, you know, it should, no, have, should thought, have been rated I thought R. the casting was fine. I yeah. just don't think they had a strong enough they, take. They had, a, they, had, they had like a kernel yeah. of an interesting idea with the Oldman character as the Dr. Frankenstein for the Robo. Once again, yeah. future episode of the show, you'll hear me talk all yeah. about it. I think there's good stuff in that movie, but yeah, it's okay. flawed. Uh, and Keaton is a big reason, it, uh, the, the, a big positive in it, because Keaton makes everything better. Talk and about like fun say scenes. Michael Keaton is Ming the Merciless. <laughs> you know what? I'd be curious. With his baldness. I'd be curious. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's Flash. <laughs> that's Flash. Ah. Yep. Yeah. Savior ah, of the universe. This one, every single one of us recommends. This is if this you've is not seen it. This is a hard, must watch. Yeah. Hard, yeah. It's just. Like, and and we should people should be aware of Melody Anderson because she's great. And uh, we didn't talk she, about her. She's great. She's she's real. great. Uh, if you ever get a chance to see the Ernie Kovacs TV movie with her and as oh, yeah. Edie Adams and yeah. Jeff Goldblum yeah. as Kovacs is yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Robin. I hadn't thought yeah. about that in a long time. Um, really great. Next week and on the show, Anderson. we get something that I feel like is even more cult in its popularity. Than this. Whoa, that's saying something. I, I think so. I mean, in terms of it's, it's even it's a smaller audience, but is is dedicated to this, and we're wildly shifting uh, vibes here. But similar right, uh, commitment. Careful. John, be careful because this this thing could implode. This. Yeah. What is well, I'm just saying. Go up next flames. week is Robert Altman's Popeye. Oh. Ah, oh. Ah, ah. Robert Altman's Popeye. Yeah. Uh, talk Blow about a movie. Down. The the there the, there are. People who love this love this movie. Love it. And love but it. but at the time was like this is the end of Altman's career. Like the way people talk about it was like what the yes. fuck is wrong with him? Uh, he's out of his goddamn yeah. mind. I think a movie that I don't know that it's been a, reappreciated on a mass level, but there's a Not strong contingent level. that is like, no, dude, Popeye's pretty good. I see its faults, and yeah. and uh, I don't care about them. It, talk about a movie like, that just I love what's there what works it's same with flash gordon what works so outweighs what doesn't mm-hmm. that i'm all on board and harry nelson till the end yeah, of yeah well the, the songs harry are nelson a big part of it of and yeah it, i mean it we're, we'll talk about it more yeah. next week but i i my i'm gonna give you a hot take preview yeah only a director like robert altman <laughs> could make a true yeah, Popeye movie. Yeah, uh, and as always, Only. I will I will leave us with the tagline, which is pretty great. He's a man's man. He's a ladies' man. He's a family man. He's a sailor man. <laughs> <laughs> pretty great tagline for the Popeye movie. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that will be next week on the show. Of course, if you want more from this show and everything on the Punch-Up Entertainment Network, uh, head over to our patron page, which is patron.podbean.com slash 
punch up there you can hear uh some of our uh, uh connect devs as the ip squad you can also hear the three of us talking about the career of one vincent price over on a show we do yes. uh over there uh, all those yes. episodes are available Dune. now soon yes donate your money you babies <laughs> Listen to Christ. Uh, but... um, and one thing I will promise next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. No boar worms. No, not a one. No. Oh, well, you know what? Once again, it's been a while not since I've seen it. I can't. <laughs> and Alan McMuchy yelling, not the boar worms. Something I've remembered since I was 10 years old. Yeah. How could you forget uh, it? I was terrified of what the boar worms were. Dude, that uh, and the boar worms and the thing from Rathacon. Well, that's a different <laughs> You owe me an apology. You All right. Well, apology. we'll we'll have to deal with that off mic because uh, until next oh, yeah. week, the case file, <laughs> it's closed. <laughs>